Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another In the OT podcast for BetUpSportsBlog.com. Today we're breaking down U.S. Open golf as Webb Simpson is your winner after a miraculous weekend firing back-to-back 68s and finishing at one over par. I don't think too many people had this guy pegged to go out and win this championship, especially after the fact that he was sitting at five over for the first two days. And uh, even today, after a shaky start being uh, two over, on his round through the first five holes, sitting at plus five overall with Fierk sitting there at one under par. He figured, how on earth is he going to make up that gap? Well, he went on and, and finished uh, four under through the remaining holes in this uh, golf tournament. And not only did he play great on the back nine, he also left a lot of shots out there. He missed a ton of birdie putts. He was seeking the pin all day long, hitting iron shots stiff to the pin. So he really could have even shot in a couple strokes le- lower if his putter was working even better than it was earlier in the round and uh, you know when I thought about this round today I really thought that it was Jim Fierke's tournament to lose I figured maybe GMAC would give him a shot but when he was missing the fairway left right and center early in bogeying and he built up that two stroke lead I just figured Fierke is just so solid there's no way he's going to surrender that lead and then we saw what happened on the back nine he made that one bogey on the uh, par four, he couldn't get up and down. He had that bad break. The ball went over the back of the green. It hit pretty hard. He couldn't uh, chip it that close. Missed a 15 footer. Then we all know what happened. He unraveled on that 16th hole when he duck hooked that ball into the trees along par five, which actually played shorter today. Then on 18, he had a bit of a blunder there on his approach shot. He probably got a little too aggressive trying to hole out uh, in the in the sand trap there just to have a chance to uh, force the playoff. But uh, we got to tip our hats here to Webb Simpson. And, and even though not too many people had him pegged as a favorite or someone you thought could win this event, we can't overlook the fact that this guy really has been good the last year. He has emerged on the scene. Just think about how well he played down the stretch last year, having won two events, his first two of his career. He was a top 10 machine. He was in contention for the FedEx Cup point totals last year, and he was ranked 14th in the world coming into this. So it's not like someone that's just a complete stranger to golf fans. And furthermore, uh, I think the main reason that many people People didn't really peg him to be in the mix this week was his recent form. The fact that he was missing a lot of cuts, and maybe that's why the odds on him were so high going into this tournament, 88 to 1 odds. And obviously, I'm a fan of what took place because I put down a small wager on him and cashed a large ticket. Now, I did have a bigger piece of Jim Furyk, substantially more on him had he won, because I thought that this course really suited him well. But nonetheless, I'll take it. Obviously, any time I have two guys that are in contention to win the U.S. Open at long shots, oh, it's, I'm just enthralled and loving the golf the entire day. But, uh, I mean, it just goes to show with these tournaments here, you just got to hang around and anything really is possible because of the fact that these scores are usually well over par. And uh, it just makes for great theater, great drama. I mean, if you're a sports fan, you've got to love what takes place on that Sunday afternoon. The fact that there were five, six, seven, eight guys that were all within striking distance made it for some fantastic drama. And even a veteran like Jim Fierke, who's playing oh so solid, you can just never take anything for granted on a course this difficult. So, you know, I, I really do feel bad for Jim Fierke because his game plan was almost executed to perfection. He just sort of lost it a little bit at the end there. And when you think about his game, he's not the type of person on this course that's going to go after pins and make a ton of birdies. He was all about the pars. He was all about conservative play, just making sure to uh, put the ball in the right spots on the course, and it ended up not being quite enough for him as someone like Simpson was able to get a little bit more going on. And maybe the that was a result of the fact that he was so far behind that he knew he had to sort of force the play. And we saw other guys trying a similar style. Padraig Harrington got awfully close with that philosophy. Ernie Els had a lot of shots that, you know, he just got some really bad bounces. That one on the par through in the ball rolled back 40 yards around that par 5 and it hopped over and he took that putter out and it came back down the hill so those guys were right in there even McDowell after the rough start was uh, you know getting it going on and even at a 15-20 footer to force the playoff you look at someone like a Jason Dufton who's hitting the ball terrific all week long he had his opportunities he figured maybe Westwood would rally but no it was Webb Simpson rock solid a back-to-back 68 and you really got to tip your hat to him I was just absolutely loving the golf 
out there today. So we would like to send our congratulations to him. And let me tell you guys, I follow golf pretty intently. This guy ain't going away anytime soon. This guy has got tremendous game. He's only 26 years old. He will be a fixture. He will be a top 10 golfer for many years to come. And I believe I'll have an opportunity to win majors here in the future as he showed a ton of moxie here being able to pull off this victory. So that wraps up the second major of the year. And I guess since we always have to talk about it because everyone needs to know what Tiger's doing, even though I don't give a shit half the time because I just view him as another golfer, he's no dominating force anymore. And that was quite evident based on his meltdown this weekend. The exact same pump fake we saw at the Masters is what we saw here at the U.S. Open. He won a tournament leading into it. He had a good start to the week, but he crumbled when it mattered most on the weekend. He was inconsistent. His approach shot stunk the joint out. He wasn't driving into the fairway as much. And most importantly, he couldn't make any putts. So you know what? All this talk about Tiger's back, he ain't back in terms of what we've seen from Tiger before. He'll never be back to that. I'm sorry. He's just going to be another guy that's in the mix, that's going to be maybe ranked 5th, 10th in the world, but he will never dominate at the same level he did. It's going to be nearly impossible to. That was one of the most dominating performances we saw in all of sports in the history of the world for 6-7 years, and to think someone who's in their mid-30s, who's had health issues, and who knows still what's going on mentally upstairs, will get back there. We are dreaming. If he happens to win a major once every 2, 3, 4 years, that'd be considered good in my opinion because, uh, you know, these other young guys, they just don't fear him as much anymore. He's not as intimidating, and he's just clearly not as good. So, uh, you know, we can talk about the progress he's made, but really, what progress is there if he's been putting himself in contention a little bit in majors, and he just continues to get worse when the pressure gets going on on the weekend? I mean, Tiger's still a good golfer, don't get me wrong. He's still going to go down as a legend even if he used to retire today. I'd still say he's the best golfer of all time, but for those of you that are intrigued by Tiger that want to see him in contention on majors on Sundays, do not expect it anytime soon because I just don't believe his game is nearly complete enough at this time. Once again, another In the OT podcast, BetUpSportsBlog.com, Webb Simpson wins the U.S. Open at the Olympic Club. A very special event, and uh, boy, when it comes to these tournaments, when the final scores are over par, you just really can't count anybody out. Five, six, seven over, you just limit your damage uh, when you have bad holes earlier on in the tournament, and anything is 